Argonia. Bland, boring, just not that much to look at. Well, you know what? That is where you're, well, right, actually. But you know what? Every thorn has its rose and every rain has its bow. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Argonia. Hey what's up guys, it's Yeti here and welcome back to another episode of my Elder Scrolls 6 Possible Location Discussions. Today we're going to be covering Argonia aka Black Marsh. So before we even get into this video, there's one thing, one elephant in the room which I want to talk about right away, and that is Argonia vs Black Marsh. Some people seem to be confused as to what it's actually called. Now the province was actually originally called Argonia, um, however Argonia is more of an area as sort of southern, southern parts of Morrowind were actually considered Argonia as well. But then, as they got invaded towards the end of the first era, it sort of was changed to Black Marsh. Black Marsh also was a little bit of a derogatory term, which ended up just sticking because so many people use that over Argonia. So really, both are still accepted. Argonia is what the Argonians prefer it to be called, although Black Marsh is the more widely accepted one. However, both Argonia and Black Marsh are the correct names. So let's get into the information about Argonia. So Argonia is actually the province just south of Morrowind and just east of Cyrodiil. Now, this actually has quite a rich history, especially linking in with Morrowind, although it's actually recorded that not a lot is known about what was happening in Argonia over the first and the second era. It is known that there was a lot of hostility going on there. The Imperials actually used the Black Marsh in the second era as a sort of secondary prison for all the worst criminals that they didn't want to deal with. They'd sort of just send them there and discard them into the Black Marsh so they didn't have to deal with them. And there was actually a problem with the Dumna in Morrowind in the first era and second era, where the Dumna would basically steal and kidnap the Argonians and use them as slaves. So right off the bat, even though it's not known much about what was happening during both those eras, there is already a rich history there. And as a result of all this like deep dark history, it's quite a hostile area, there's a lot of hostility going on, a lot of danger and a lot of untrust. Argonians that live there, uh, at least for the first few eras, tended to not leave that much, although that did change later on. And not a lot of people who aren't Argonians would go in there unless they were thrown there as prisoners, so it's a very hostile area and very unwelcome for those who aren't Argonians. As far as the government for Argonia goes, it's very unclear as to what is actually going on there. Now, I'll talk about this a bit more in the pros and cons, but basically, it's suggested that there are a few different possibilities over how it's actually run. Uh, one possibility is that it's run by the Anzalil. This is a big one because it seems that this was who was running them after the Oblivion Crisis in the sort of later fifth era. So it seems like they're maybe in charge. But there's also a lot of references over the course of the, the Elder Scrolls series. A lot of references to an Argonian king and even a potential Argonian royal court. Um, and th that could be the governing body. So it's a little bit unsure. These are the two main possibilities that it's either this Anzalil, which are like a military faction, um, although they could just be a faction and not a government, or it could be the royal court, so we don't really know. There's also a possibility that it's run by the Hist, uh, or at least influence a lot. Now, the Hist are actually these sentient trees, very similar to the moving trees in Valemod, except a bit more in that they don't just sort of move around like a plant, they're actually fully sentient. So it's also suggested that the Hist are at least partly in control of the government or have some influence over it, even if they're not fully in charge. In my opinion, I do think that the, the King and the Royal Court are the ones that oversee it, Sort of similar to Elsewhere, where, which is run by the main, who is like the Khajiit king. I do think that it's run by the Argonian king and court, and then the Anzalil are like the military, and then the Hist have just like a secondary part of it as well, considering they are basically part of the land. Although that isn't really clear for sure. So before we get into the geography, I want to go through a bit of a brief history of Argonia. We won't go too deep into the lore, but I think a bit of backstory is necessary. So as I mentioned earlier, not a lot is actually known between the first and second area, as not a lot was recorded, and even to this day, the Argonians tend to not talk about what happened happened there, but we do know that a lot of Argonians were taken by the Dumna and used as slaves, and this is relevant uh, uh, later on, and we also know that a lot of prisoners were dumped there. So during the end of the first era, the Riemann Empire actually engaged in a big battle with the people of Argonia, uh, basically called the Battle of Argonia, and because of this defeat, the Argonians basically retreated to an area called Hellstrom, which is where the Imperials would not go, and at this point it all sort of fell apart. This is where Argonia started to be known as the Black Marsh, this is where the slave traders started taking Argonians, and where the Riemann Empire took over a bit more, and yeah, this is where it all started to go a bit bad. So the Dumna were now really pushing down on the Argonians, a lot of them have already been killed in this Battle of Argonia, and also, to quote the wiki here, the land that had once been a haven for Tamriel's criminals 
became its greatest prison state. Anyone considered too dangerous to hold in civilised dungeons in other provinces were sent to Black Marsh. So at this point, it's a very hostile area. They've just lost a war. They're now being stolen left, right and centre and sold into the slave trade. And these very dangerous criminals have just been discarded there. So it's a very dangerous, very hostile area. So during the second era, again, very little is known, even less in the second era than the first era. Essentially, the Argonians basically made this flu. Uh, it's a little bit unsure whether it was naturally created or whether it was created by this Argonian shaman. Um, but they basically made it, they started spreading it around. The Argonians were immune to it. Um, well, the stronger Argonians, and it basically it killed off all the weaker Argonians, which had become slaves. So all these slaves were dying off, so these oppressors basically didn't have any slaves anymore to sell, because they were all dying of this, this plague, this flu. But it was also killing the oppressors as well. So this basically, it pushed back the Dumna, it pushed back the House of Dress, and it scared everyone away from the land, uh, because they were all scared of this flu. So even though this did push people back quite a lot, the House, the house Dress actually kept sending people... Uh, sending slavers into Argonia to basically take these Argonians. Not a lot happened in the Third Era as far as Argonia goes, however, there was a big change for them in the Armesian War, which was basically an uprising where all the Ar Argonians got together and just kicked the shit out of the Dumna, or more specifically, the House Dress. Uh, this was actually basically just to give revenge on all of the, the suffering that they got from the slavery from the House Dress. Um, and then this was basically the turning point for them. And then the fourth era was basically when everything started to clear up. They were a little bit terrified as far as the Oblivion Crisis goes, but basically the Hist, which I mentioned earlier, actually were able to scare away the Daedra from the Black Marsh or Argonia. Um, the military, the Anzalil, actually were able to basically drive back the Daedra, sending them back into the Oblivion Gates once they were shut, uh, or before they were shut, and then they were shut, so they were gone, basically. So, yeah, the, the, the military, the Hist, and also the Anzalil were able to get rid of the Daedra, so as far as, you know, as far as the, the danger goes from the Daedra, they were actually never really in too much of a threat, even though they were worried at first. Uh, and then after this Oblivion Crisis, uh, at the end of the Fourth Era, they actually became an independent province. Now, as I mentioned, they were this back in the day, back in the start of the First Era, but then things changed as time went on. So this is where they became their own province again, was in the Fourth Era. There was a bit of a push where they basically, their military pushed into the south of Morrowind, but then a different house in Morrowind pushed them back. So a lot of lives were killed, but at this point it was just an eye for an eye. Uh, and as far as the end of the fourth era goes, they are currently neutral between the Empire and the Aldmeri Dominion battles that are happening. Uh, so Argonia, uh, they've cleared up all the problems, they're their own province now, and they appear to be finally equal with Morrowind, and they are neutral towards the current issues. As far as geography goes, it's actually kind of straightforward. It's basically a fuck-off massive marsh. It's sort of different in that the top half of it seems to be quite thick, dense marsh, and then as you get to the bottom half of it, it's more broken up in, like, a large amount of small miles, uh, small islands even, I don't know why I said miles, a large amount of small islands which are basically split up by these rivers, so it's basically split pretty much 50-50, the top half being dense thick marshland, and then the bottom half being these just a load of different islands and stuff. It's one of the largest provinces, although we don't really know exactly how big it is, but it is one of the largest provinces we know that much. Uh, and one also final thing to note, again quoted from the wiki, Black Marsh is also subjected to a unique type of rain, sometimes referred to by the religion's inhabitants as hist piss, often accompanied by heavy thunder and fog. It has been described as an inferno of foul-smelling yellow-brown rain. Not really much you can say about that. I mean, in the game, you're not going to be able to smell it, right? But, you know, it exists, so if the game were to be set in Argonia, then that would be a thing that would be had to be deal dealt with. As far as cities goes, this is maybe one of the most promising ones we've seen since I've started this series. There are a lot of cities there, there's enough cities there, compared to the amount of cities in the likes of Skyrim, Oblivion, and Morrowind, there are plenty of cities there, plenty of options. Um, some of them, i.e. Hellstrom, which is actually the capital of Argonia, or at least it's in the center of Argonia, and is the biggest one. Uh, this has actually never been reached by the Cyrodiilic Empire, so the Imperials have never really been there. Um, so this could be a new area to explore, but we're coming to that. But there are plenty of options, Lilimoth, Solrest, Stormhold, Gideon, these are all really big cities, and there are some smaller ones as well, like Archon, Black Rose, and Thorn. So there are a ton of cities here, a ton of options, very different ones. Um, one particular one is Lilimoth, which is, is the most southern city, and it's described as the festering jewel of the Black Marsh. So this is all in like the more watery area. Um, and then you got like Stormhold and also uh, Gideon, and these two are actually found by the Aeliads. So these ones are a bit more sort of stone made, uh, a bit grander, and probably a bit more ruiny type uh, cities, as opposed to something like Solrest or 
Lillamoth, which are more sort of marshy cities. So, the, yeah, there's a bunch of different cities, and there are a bunch of different options within them, and a ton of variety even just within the cities in there. So who lives in Argonia? Well, obviously the Argonians live there, so we're not going to go into too much detail with those, but something I really like to do with this series is talk about the people who we haven't really heard much about from the other games. So I briefly mentioned the Hist earlier on. As I mentioned, these are basically sentient trees. Now, they work like a hive mind, so they're all... The different trees, but they sort of are on the same brain, I guess. If any of them were to go rogue, even though it's very difficult, um, they can do it. And if any of them were to go rogue, the hist basically just murder that tree and <laughs> remove it from the group, um, which hasn't happened for over 300 years, to be fair. Uh, they basically, they can create this substance, which can only be used by Argonians without a negative reaction. Uh, if other people use it, it basically makes everyone seem like an enemy to them, it makes them really hostile. Uh, but the Argonians can use it without a negative reaction. Uh, and if anyone were to use this sap, it basically means that the Hist are supposedly be able to communicate telepathically with people who have ingested their sap. So they're a hive mind tree network across the whole of Black Marsh who are... Are sentient and they know what's what's going on and stuff. So you've also got the Naga. These are essentially a sub race of Argonians. They're very similar to Argonians. They look a lot more fish-like, and these are described as sort of violent thugs and drug smugglers. Uh, a quote from the wiki. Um, so these are very violent, and it actually says here they almost never leave Black Marsh, rarely coming into contact with non-Argonians. So if we were to have a game set here and we were playing any other races, these guys would be very hostile, um, very aggressive if you were to bump into them. Very much like the bandits or the Forsworn, if you know they're like, hey, you've come to the wrong place, or you picked a bad day to get lost, friend. Except maybe a bit more aggressive and more violent, so... Yeah, that's the Naga. I also wanted to talk about the Lilmo Thet. I'm not really sure fully how to pronounce that, so I'll try my best there. Now, these guys, they haven't been seen for a long time, and they're supposedly extinct. However, as the wiki actually said, it's actually stated in the Pocket Guide to the Empire that their fate is actually unknown. So, similar to the Nervarine, they could be gone, they could be dead, they could be extinct, and most people think that they are extinct, but they also could not be. Now, these guys are essentially sort of like a mix between Khajiit and Argonians. They are humanoids, and they take a vulpine appearance, which basically means they're sort of like human-shaped foxes. And, yeah, they look interesting. They may be, may be dead. I guess they're sort of like a Khajiit variant, then, because if a fox is sort of like a cat, it's not actually, now that I've said that, you know, that seemed right in my head when I said it, but... Now that I've actually said that aloud, I'm like, that's ridiculous. They're basically fox people. So as far as religion goes, once again, not much is known, but they actually have a very interesting sort of religious backstory, uh, or at least I think it's very interesting now. Coming back to the Hist, they actually basically worship the Hist and see them as their god. Um, now something that's interesting is that when a baby Argonian is born, they actually drink the sap from the Hist straight away, and it's actually thought by the Argonians that this drinking that Hist is actually giving the hatchling its soul. And then the Argonian will grow up, and then when that Argonian dies, the Hist goes back into the Hist trees, um, and then that will then be given into a different hatchling to give that its soul, and then the cycle repeats from there. Um, now, as I mentioned earlier, if you drink the, tra the sap from the Hist, you actually have like telepathic communication with the Hist itself. So, you know, if an Argonian is born, they drink the Hist sap as soon as it's born to get their soul, and then throughout their life they can communicate with these sentient trees. Uh, they also worship Sithis, uh, similar, like, similarly to how the Dark Brotherhood worships the Night Mother. Um, in, they're actually they're pretty interesting with this in the way that they mainly follow the Hist, but actually, if an Argonian is ever born under the sign of the Shadow, they are straight away given to the Dark Brotherhood without any, any word about it. They're straight away given to the Dark Brotherhood at birth, and then the Dark Brotherhood then trains that Argonian uh, under the art of stealth and assassination. Uh, they'll then basically work for the Dark Brotherhood as they grow up until they eventually earn the rank of Shadow Scale, which is a special like higher rank for the Argonians. And then once they've earned that rank, they will then serve the sort of government of Argonia or the Royal Court or whatever. Uh, they serve them then as spies and assassins. So any assassin, any Argonians which are born under the the Shadow straight away just become like given to the brotherhood and they'll be trained up over their lives to work for like the Argonian secret service I guess. So that's pretty much my information on the main overview and everything you need to know about Argonia. Now I'm going to talk about the pros and cons briefly. I've decided based on what I think on the previous episodes I'd rather talk about more in detail about the overview of the province itself and less about the pros and cons um, but I am still doing both so let's get into those. But mainly my reason for this is just because I feel like 
the the pros and cons are basically the same every time for the most part so i feel like we want to go more into the overview so instead of spending a bunch of time on the pros and cons let's just do it very shortly now pros we know very little about this but what we do know is really interesting so we know very little that means that there's a lot of potential to change stuff up right there's a lot of potential to deal with new things we haven't dealt with before if we don't know much about it then not only is it new stuff for us to experience but it means there's a lot of freedom to move as far as development goes for bethesda because it's not like oh we've got to do this and this exactly they can do not necessarily what they want but they can be a bit freer to change it around how they want as well as new things to explore as well and like i said it's very interesting i mean the hist we've not seen anything like this before it's a network of trees across the whole country the argonians will um, you know, have this whole thing of drinking the sap from the hist when they're born, and then they have this like telepathic communication with the hist. Um, there's also the whole thing of the shadow scale type thing, and yeah, that's pretty cool, in my opinion at least. There's also these new race type people classes, i.e., the Naga, and also the Lily Mothites. <laughs> um, Lil Mothites, and again, I'm not sure how to say that. But yeah, the Naga, we haven't seen them before, a little bit interesting, a little bit of a different variation. Whether or not you'd be able to play as them, I don't know. If you could, whether they'd be like, you click Argonian and then you can change to Argonian or Naga, or whether they'd just be a completely separate one amongst the other races, um, I don't know. But the Naga, interesting to go against. And then obviously the Lil Mathi as well. Again, we don't know where they are, but why not bring them back, right? The Fates Unknown, why not bring them back, Bethesda? They'd be pretty cool, Fox people, and once again, another potential race, so... Yeah, it'd always be pretty cool. And I know a lot of people seem to be like, oh, you know, you can't add more races. I don't want more races. That's not how it should be. But you know what? I have actually, across my wishlist video and some other videos, I've seen a fair amount of people say that they'd be happy to see new races. There's two right there, but there's the Naga and Lilmathite. So, you know, why not? And then another one is Cities, and I quite like this one as an advantage because as far as elsewhere in Valenwood goes, uh, those were some of my cons in that there wasn't a ton there in the Wave Cities. This one seems to be the best one we've had so far. There's actually a ton of cities there. There's actually eight cities in Black Marsh, and that is a good amount of cities. I'm not sure on the, off the top of my head how many cities there were in Oblivion, Morrowind, or Skyrim, but I'll put those on the screen now. But there's eight cities, and that's pretty sweet. And especially since, as I mentioned earlier, within those cities, there's differences. So some of them will be set in, like, the watery island area. Some of them will be set in the more marshland area. And some of them are based on, like, alien ruins and structures. So, yeah, there's there's some pretty awesome potential, not only in the fact that there are cities there, but also in the fact that they're different as well. And there's variety between each individual city. And another one is that it is massive, so plenty of exploration space. So going on to the cons now, and honestly, the main one is one that we've heard before, and it's just the bias towards certain races. Now, you know what? In Elsewhere, you can get over the whole Khajiit thing because it's like, oh, yeah, they live there, whatever, right? But the thing is, in Argonia, the Argonians actually get a distinct advantage because although it's only, like, said by the Argonians that they can talk to the Hiss, the other races obviously don't know if this is true. If this is true in the game, then if you play as an Argonian, you get to talk to the Hist. If you play as any other class, you get a completely different way of playing it. And I'm all for having different experiences based on different races that you play, but I feel like having it, you know, weighted that heavily that if you play as an Argonian, you get this whole Hist experience. If you play as any other class at all, you don't get the Hist experience. I feel like that could be a bit biased. Similarly, coming back to the Naga, if you play as the Argonians, the Naga are friends with the Argonians because they're sort of like Argonians. But if you play as any other class, as it says, the Argonian, the, the Naga have never really come into contact with non-Imperials, and they're also really aggressive and hostile. So if you play as any other class, you're most likely going to have to come across this problem of facing the Naga all the goddamn time every time you see them. Maybe they could weigh this in that if you go something like, oh, more towards the fighting route, you could fight them, but maybe you could, if you have like a high, you know, personality rating or speech rating or that sort of thing, rating what the fuck am I talking like skill then maybe you'd be less likely to need to fight them and more likely for them to like you or maybe depending on what you do in the main quest or in side quests you could maybe get your reputation up with them and then at that point they'll like you a bit more or less depending on your reputation um so that does give them an opening for that at the very least but I think they'd have to do the right thing for that to work but I think it could be interesting it'd be interesting to see some reverse racism people are always be racist to the Argonians uh, it'd be cool to see the Dumna walking around Argonia and having like derogatory terms yelled at them um that'd be cool but that's gonna do it for this video I hope you guys did enjoy let me know what you think of this new, new style I much prefer it of spending more time going into more detail with 
the overview of the province and its history, and then less time on the pros and cons. Let me know what you guys think. If you want to see more and you haven't already done so, be sure to subscribe for more videos like this. And if you want to uh, support the channel, leave a like. It really, really helps me out. These videos take a long fucking time, and I'd really appreciate that. So, yeah, without that's that's all I'm going to say. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy. My name's Vinny, and I will see you guys next time. Peace, peace, guys.